do you do? Well, it's good to see you here. Hi, Paul. How are you? How are you, sir? George Bush. Hello. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Dexter. How do you do? How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Mr. President, I very much appreciate you giving this opportunity for receiving me as representative of Solidarity. I am instructed by Lech Wałęsa to give you his due regards and warm greetings. Well, please give me And a we have a small thing for you which shows solidarność, which has been hit, but it's still alive. This has been made clandestinely in Gdańsk Shipyard in 1981. I mean, during the, after imposition of state of war, it was the response of the Gdańsk workers. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we greatly admire uh, all that solidarity means and what it has been doing. And uh, I have a particular sympathy because for several years I was president of my own union when I was in the motion picture business. This we know, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Uh, well, I'm, we're very concerned and have a very deep feeling for the people of, of Poland and what solidarity has meant to them. And I would, very much appreciate the little time we have hearing from you as to what the situation is and what you look forward to. Mr. President, first of all, I would like to thank you for your policy toward Poland since the very beginning of your first uh, period of presidency here. Uh, you, are, you are very admired in Poland and you will be remembered by our history for long. But this results that people in Poland have great hopes in you that this will be continued and this even will be strengthened. And Lech Wałęsa has instructed me to, uh, to give you just good a good It was good. It was, it was a wonderful trip. trip. Yeah, it was just good. Good. Okay. Just great. Food we just got a little tired. The food was marvelous, but we just got a little tired on the jet lag. Well, when did you get back? Isn't Much more Thank than you. Welcome to the White House. The boss of his yes. life over it. <laughs> Once he gets out of the regular White House, he comes here. Yes. Some response. <laughs> 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 How are you doing? Just fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I understand that you're not only from Mississippi, but you're from his hometown. Right. That's right. right. Thank you. Bringing you in. This is. This is an honor. This is a well, very good honor to meet you. I'm very pleased to have you. The uh, I understand that the two kids, we have an interesting comment. You're studying communications yes. and public relations, yes. and uh, I'm an old ex-sports yes. announcer uh, and uh, the radio. Yes. And uh, also, one of your interests is swimming. Yes, you want to swim? Well, I spent seven summers as a lifeguard. Did you? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> tell tell him about what you did over Miss. He was the president of Miss. Well, I am a member of College of Politics at the University of Mississippi. And uh, we, both the faculty and staff, have our meetings when we have meetings, and they said that they have never seen this much motivation, this much inspiration in College of College Republicans before, ever since the year of So. <laughs> On behalf of the College of Politics and the University of Mississippi, I want to tell you that. Well, and then this is really a bipartisan. He's almost a Republican. We get one yeah. snap. So there we go. No, stay there. We'll keep this conversation right here. We got it. Now we got it. Put the whole roof in there. Well, thank you, Mr. President. We like to work. Hold on to the award. Just a couple of souvenirs in the office. That's just, just a stick thing. Thank you. And this is just something in case you've got some papers in your desk or something. Thank you so much. I appreciate here. that. Thanks. Again, it's not. Thank well, you. I don't know whether they used to this. Because in my day, radio was so young that communications weren't a part of college at all. <laughs> I'm going to give a lesson here. I remember one thing. I couldn't understand broadcasting major league baseball every day and so forth. And I'd get mail, 
And the always, usually, in almost every minute, there'd be something about that you sound as if you're talking directly to me. And I thought, I, I don't know how I'm doing that, but it, and then one day it dawned on me. It was a pretty good lesson I've never forgotten. I realized that, you know, you ad lib a lot of stuff when you're doing a ball game. Uh -huh. Well, I knew that there was a little group of friends of mine that were usually at a, the barber shop we all patronized, listening to the ball game. And when I thought of anything to say, I was saying it to them. Right. And of course, the listener didn't know that, so it did sound like it, and I've always remembered. So you said when you're out right. there and doing it, keep in mind you're talking to somebody <laughs> that you okay. know and uh, okay. hold in affection, and uh, everybody will feel you're talking that way to them. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Well, good to see you. Bye. Good. Bye-bye. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you sir. Certification to Congress in Pakistan. Is it your judgment that uh, Pakistan doesn't have the bomb? What? Well, we we have no evidence uh, that they do, and this is required of maybe. But we are we're very hopeful that in Southeast Asia, countries will forego nuclear weapons. Uh, all the countries there, and yet at the same time. Uh, we want to be of assistance with regard to legitimate uh, energy needs, and that is a source of energy, but should not be a cover-up for, uh, for bombs and for the making of nuclear weapons. As a matter of fact, we're going to try our best to see if we at the level of the Soviet Union and ourselves cannot do something about creating those, and I would like to think that we might one day eliminate them all. But uh, uh, Mr. Gandhi, our Prime Minister, suggested in the Newsweek in an interview that uh, this is Symington Amendment uh, waiver could need not be extended. Uh, is there any way of why, why should it be extended any further? You know, there is a waiver that's it's the waiver of the Symington Amendment which allows sale of arms to Pakistan. So because otherwise, Pakistan, there's a law. Sanuton law, which would not allow sale of arms to Pakistan because of its, its nuclear weapons program. But you have granted a waiver for that, and that waiver will expire in September in 57. He says it need not be extended. Why should it be extended? Well, we hope, we hope by that time that we definitely know that there are no nuclear weapons and there's not going to be any. Because that's, that's what we've tried to, as I say, to impress on. Well, both the major countries there, but all of Southeast Asia, or for the rest of the world, for that matter. Are you, are you coming to India, sir? What? You have you accepted an invitation to India to visit India. Would you, be, would you and Mrs. Reagan be visiting? If, if we can work out a schedule to do that, we would like it very much. India is the largest only, democracy of the my world. My only experience in your country was one in which I wasn't even aware of it. I was uh, uh, on a flight from. Uh, Taiwan uh, to London, England, on my way home from some tours that I'd had over there in the, uh, in the Far East. And it seems like long before dawn, but early in the morning, uh, the plane dropped down in, in New Delhi for uh, refueling. Oh, and I was sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so at least I slept a few moments in India. <laughs> Well, but uh, no, we'd like that very much. Sir, we we'll, would we'll be uh, very happy to see you there. You have already visited China once, yes. but you did not visit India, so it's time that you also visited India. Well, India is the largest democracy of the world. I know. We'd like that very much. And you much. are the leader of the democratic world. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Nice to meet you, sir. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to seeing your prime minister in the next couple yes, of days. Yes, sir. He's sick. He's, concerned. He's very much concerned about this yeah. Pakistan's program. He has been well, we'll, making we'll statements. We'll have a good talk about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. section where they say things that happened 10 years ago they reprint and then they have one here 50 years ago. September 6th, 1935, somewhat of a bombshell burst last evening at one of the longest council sessions since the present city commission assumed control of Dixon's affairs. The bomb was hurled by Commissioner Joey Vale of the Department of Streets and in his action he gained support from other members of the council. The commission attacked the city's application to various federal programs for financial aid, charging that the projects were only of a temporary nature and meant no good to the city. There. That's why I don't want <laughs> more federal spending. Prime Minister. Mr. President, Prime Minister Blaze of Grenada. Yes. President Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Oh, it's good to see you. Well, pleased to see you. Why don't you go over and take that chair right over there? No, Mrs. Blaze, oh, Mr. Yes, President. Mr. President. Yes. Deputy Assistant yes. Secretary Paul yes. Will. Yes. Master Xavier, the Ambassador. Yes. See you, Mr. President. Thank okay. you. Why don't you go right over there? Yes. 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 Your treatment's going very well. Oh, well, indeed. The doctors are satisfied, and I'm very grateful. Good. Well, we were, believe me, we were very glad to be able to lend a hand. October seems to be the high time in the country. Not only a couple of days, a few days ago, you did a similar kind of courage. Taking a decision. And the discussions in the communal, in the communal discussions, you know, people, some yes, some no, but mostly all so. Well, Friday will be the uh, second anniversary. For Grenada, yes. For Grenada, yes. But you have already started a new thing. Thank you very much. And incidentally, let me say we're, I, this is my first chance to in person say a congratulations to you for that um, tremendous victory. Oh, yes. To the reaction to what we went on before. And the people of Greenland assured that they wish to turn their backs on that sort of nonsense. Mr. President, a lot of people think that we have won a, a significant victory and we could see where we've won. We did, we did win that, but we have not yet completed the battle. No, I know the economic problems and I wish we could be more help. We're trying to, but we have a little budgetary problem <laughs> of our own right now. But what do I mean a little budgetary problem? Well, it depends. It's a relative term, little. If you really mean little. But <laughs> <laughs> incidentally, we're, we're delighted to see your turn to our returning businesses to private ownership. And I think this is what we are about to work. We feel that government has no business in certain things, including making ice cream. Government <laughs> has no business with that. And uh, my part, 